and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be reviewing Chameleon Colour Tones pencils. These are a fairly new product from the makers of Chameleon Pens, which are these markers that you hold against the blending chamber for a graduated effect. I'll pop my review link to these in the description below if you want to read more about those. So just as those pens were made for those who find blending individual colours quite difficult, Colour Tones pencils are again designed with ease of use in mind. So they are double-ended pencils, <coughs> excuse me, each end is a different colour and the two colours which make up one pencil have been put together because they blend and merge well with each other. So for example, as you can see here, there are two shades of blue which really complement each other and they should be quite seamless when put together on the paper. This is great because you won't have to hunt through your pencils to find a shade that's going to blend well. There's no testing out on scrap pieces of paper and stuff like that. You just literally flip the pencil and the complementary shade is there. Another plus about this format is that you have 50 pencil colours but only 25 physical pencils which is really handy for taking them out and about because they'll take up less room in your bag. One of the main negatives about this though is that of course you only really have half pencils here so each colour is going to run out faster. If there was open stock available it might not be such a problem but at the moment the only way of replacing pencils is to buy the full set again. So the barrels are hexagonal and they're thicker than standard pencils, in fact they've almost got the feel of children's pencils, they're a bit chunky and they're really easy and comfortable to hold. This can only be a good thing really because it means the core is thick, it's 3.8mm actually, making them durable and hopefully quite strong. They're made in Austria, near to Switzerland, where Carandash pencils are made. So that means that the quality is probably pretty high because all the pencils made in Europe often have the best reputation for quality. They're wax based and although some of the pencils do ha apparently have a light fast rating, not all of them do. So Chameleon have decided not to list the ratings despite describing the pencils as artist quality, which I found quite odd. The pencils come in this lovely black storage box which folds out into a stand. So you can grab each pencil really quickly while you're colouring stand works like this so as you can see it just folds over onto itself and there are two magnets there which stick to this base it's not the most sturdiest of stands sometimes it does hop about a little bit and it doesn't really sit where it's supposed to but hopefully this is just a bit of a design flaw that will be rectified in future so the pencils themselves I'll just show you one really close up as you can see each pencil is printed with the chameleon name, made in Austria, and then on the back are your colour names and numbers. So some of the names they've used are so lovely. We've got like fruits like strawberry, watermelon, pear, uh, they've got foods, basil, spice, mocha, floral names like heather, mint and thistle, and then some regular names like hot pink, uh, jade and slate. I particularly love the rather Celtic green pencil which is named where are we? That's not the one. Shamrock and Clover. I really like that one. So the numbering system is quite odd in that the pencils do go from 1 to 25 obviously, but of course each pencil split in half. So for example, this is pencil number 19 and this side is 1901, this side is 1902. So the next pencil will be pencil 20, this will be 2001, 2002 and that's how it goes. So I'll just get my colour swatches out now so you can see what they look like on the page. So as you can see here, I've swatched all the colours and the shades are pretty vibrant. They certainly do match up well next to each other. I'll be including the link to this blank chart in the video description as well if you want to download that. So you'll see there's quite a few greens and some of which are quite similar to each other. So when you're blending with one of the double pencils, you may have to bring another pencil in to get more of a contrast. There is a lack of browns and greys, unfortunately, but I suppose 50 is quite a small set of pencils, really. Um, I would have preferred less of these similar greens and more earthy tones, that's just my personal opinion. There's lots of warm colours, but there's no real true red, it's rather a deep vermilion colour. So here is a practice sheet that I've recently started using when I get new sets of pencils. At the top I've tried out all the greens, on the flames I did the oranges and reds going from darkest to lightest up to here and then I used three different pencils so six different tones from dark to light which provided the most seamless blend. 
So they do work well with each other interchangeably. It's not just the top and the bottom. You can work with different shades in the pencils as well. This one at the end was the light yellow going into the white because I just wanted to see how that white would blend out. And it is really soft and it works really well. So on the flowers, I used the pinks, reds and purples. And again, sometimes I needed to press harder to get more of a contrast because they do just seem to disappear into each other. Um, whereas I think when you blend, you want it to be seamless, but you still want to visibly see that there are two or more different shades in there. The butterflies are the blues and also the first one of the hair here is one of the blues as well. Uh, and then we've got the, the skin tones. So although there's really only one or two pencils that you would think are skin tones, I was actually able to make five different shades between them. The first feather is the Spice slash Ginger pencil. This is just because I didn't have anywhere else to test it so far, so I just thought I'd put it on here. The next two feathers are some blends between totally different um, shades. So we've got the pink into a dark purple and we've got a, a orangey red into a really deep red. So here at the bottom I just did some random crystals to see what opposing colours look like together and then some diamonds and gems to um, see what the analogous tones look like, so all the greens, all the purples, all the blues, all the pinks. So how do they feel on the page, most important question. Well, they're described as being soft and buttery, but I'd have to disagree with that, unfortunately. Um, they are on the harder side. They're closer to polychromos than Prismacolor, which are obviously the softest leads, in my opinion, anyway. They're not as hard as polys, but I certainly wouldn't have described them as buttery. They take a small amount of layering, but the saturation doesn't really show fully unless you use pressure. Problem is, this leads very quickly to blooming and it starts to look muddy and granulated. So my best advice would be to use the pencils fairly lightly and not try to get 100% saturation when blending because these leads burnish quite quickly and you'll get that speckled effect. Uh, there can be quite a bit of fine dust as well when you colour in so I'd advise you to sweep that away with a dust brush because it will smear if you're not careful. So I'll just show you what I mean by what I said. You do have to, to get those blends, sometimes you have to press pretty hard and it does create a bit of a strange look but again I suppose it depends what sort of paper you're using as well and what kind of pressure as well. So I've sharpened most of the pencils and none of them are broken so that strength and sturdiness of the outside will it does follow through on the inside. As the pencils are thicker than most you might need to use a slightly larger hold sharpener. I use the T-Gal and it very snugly fits so I was quite lucky with that. Price-wise, the pencils are around £42 on Amazon, making them around 80 pence per pencil or £1.60 for half a pencil, depending which way you look at it. They're probably a little bit too expensive for me. I would have comfortably paid £25 to £30 for this set, considering the half leads and the fact that they're on the harder lead scale. So the link to buy the pencils is in the description box below if you want to go and have a look and purchase them on Amazon. Overall, the pencils do achieve the main selling point of blending together easily, and it's great for when you can't be bothered trying to match colours in a huge set, because the blends are literally there, already thought out and put together for you. I would have liked a bigger set than 50, and less of the very similar greens, but for a basic starter kit, these are the most common and used colour shades, so you can't really go wrong in that sense. The fact that the pencils are only half length wouldn't be so bad if there was open stock, but that is a big drawback for me because I can imagine using these up quite quickly and then not being able to get single replacements. Hopefully this is something Chameleon's going to think about in the future. I uh, hope you've enjoyed my review. Please do like, comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. It really, really helps me continue making these videos for you guys um, when I know that you're really interested in enjoying what I'm doing. So I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.